Hello and welcome to this week's AMA. Uh, in this week's video I'm just going to focus on one question because it's a little bit of a bigger question and this particular lady asked um, if I could help her um, because her images that she was using she couldn't get them to be crisp and sharp they were always really fuzzy and low quality and asking why that is and, and what she should do about it. So um, it's a great question. I think it'll be so useful to pretty much everybody who is on this AMA, unless you've got a uh, kind of some kind of design background or 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 um, you know that kind of creation background. Um, so I wanted to go through why that is, but in order to do that, I need to give you a kind of basics in understanding graphics uh, so that's what I'm going to do today and the other element to it is understanding the different file types so what's the difference between a JPEG, a PNG, a GIF, a TIFF, uh, a PDF uh, because you, you, you come up with all these different file types um, and so often people don't understand what they want to save their image as or why it would make a difference and depending on what you save it as does depend on it does impact on the quality of what you get so I just kind of um, want to include that in what I'm going to talk about so the first thing that I need to explain to you is the difference between what they call a vector image that's VEC vector image uh, and a, a raster image and the difference between these two is how that image is actually created, how it's made up. And this screen here demonstrates each of them. So one of them is a vector image and one of them is a raster image. Okay. So a vector image is made up of shapes. It is mathematical equation and it, it gives that shape points. So say, you know, this triangle, this point, this point, this point, and it's a mathematical equation between those points. And then the image is made up of a number of different points and shapes. So that's a vector. A raster image is made up of pixels. It's made up of dots. And the more dots that you have, the better the quality of that image is. And each dot is different colours and that's what makes up the image. So hopefully with that explanation you can know which one of these images is a raster image and which one is a vector. And the answer is this balloon here, uh, this picture, this is a raster image. It's made up of pixels, it's made up of dots. This image on this side is a vector. It's made up of each of these, these shapes. Why do we even care? The answer is, is because this image is made up of mathematical equations, you can make it as big as you would like and you never lose the quality of the image because all it's doing is multiplying that mathematical equation. So it just makes that square bigger, but it's still a square. Um, so it holds its shape no matter how big you make the image. On a raster image, um, because it's made up of dots, when you make that image larger, and this is quite a good image, a high quality image, so it's probably not going to do it, but I'll show you on the next next bit what I mean. But the, the basic principle is when you make that image larger, you're stretching the same number of dots over a bigger space, and that's where it starts getting fuzzy and losing its quality, is when you take a raster image and you stretch it. Um, so if you have a vector image, it doesn't always mean that it looks clip art. So this particular image here is a vector image. It's made up of all these uh, dots and shapes and waves and all sorts of different things. And I can make that bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and it still be as crisp and as sharp as it was before. So why is this a challenge? Because even though this picture was created as a vector image in shape form and mathematical function if I then right click let's make it small just so you can get the point if I right click and save this picture and I save it as a JPEG a JPEG is a 
I'll go through the different file formats in a minute, but a JPEG is a raster image. It's saving it as a picture. And I save it as a vector one, so I know what it is. If I then insert that image, it's actually a raster image, even though the original file is vector because I've shared, I've saved it as a JPEG. So what will happen then is these images look exactly the same, but if I stretch this image and I'm going to use it as the background of this, this PowerPoint, can you see that all of a sudden the quality is getting lost? And that's what happens with a raster image is you, you, you are stretching a small image and losing the quality because of the pixels. So this is where they talk about resolution. If you get an image, a raster image, and it's high resolution, i.e. lots of dots, and it's a big file size, you can then make that image smaller and not lose the quality, but you can't make it bigger, because when you, you make it bigger, you're stretching that image. Um, when you have high resolution images, they're a big image with lots and lots of dots, they're good quality. So then you can make that smaller and you'd have a good quality image. Where the problem is, is where you have a low resolution image. So it's a small image, just like I did here. I took a small image, I saved it. It was a small, low resolution image and then I stretched it and that's where you get the problem. So number one, you're, you, it's a raster image, and number two, it's a low quality raster image. So I use, uh, let's use something in real terms. So I use a website called Pixabay, uh, which is great for kind of, you know, free stock images. So say I wanted these flowers, for example, you'll have a number of different sizes. Now Pixabay I like because even this small size is still quite a decent size uh, in terms of the resolution. It's still quite a good image. Um, but say we downloaded the small one and we wanted to use it in here and we inserted that small image. Um, flowers. It's only this big. Luckily it's a high quality image, but if I start stretching this and it might not work if it's a really really good photograph can you see the more that i stretch this the more fuzzy it becomes so it's not a good example because it's a really good quality image when you have a photograph that's taken by a professional photographer one of the things that you're paying for in those high photographic images is a high resolution. They are so good at capturing all that detail, which means that because they have such high resolution, like you just saw, that small image can be stretched and it still has wonderful quality. The challenge that you've got with something like your phone, for example, if you take a picture on your phone, um, phones are getting better, they're good, but they're not brilliant resolution. So if you're going to take a picture of your phone and then you want it as a really big image, you're going to start having resolution issues. So let me just go through the different file types with you so that you understand what's different about those. Um, this, in terms of a vector image, you, you can, they're called, they're e, e, EPS files or something like that. So you're never really going to come across the actual original vector. The most you're going to work with is raster images and you just need to make sure that your raster image is a good quality one and make sure that you buy something or get something that's a higher size than what you need so you can shrink a raster image but you can't you can't stretch it. Okay so when we go to save as picture we've got different options let's go through what the options are um, i'm going to start off with a p and uh, a jpeg image because i think this is the one that you're probably going to use the most um, a jpeg image a jpeg stands for um, joint photographic experts group um, and it's used widely on the internet because they're very small file sizes so it's used a lot on on websites and 
Facebook, social media, those kinds of things. It's very uh, versatile file type. The challenge with a JPEG is um, in order to make that small file size, it compresses the quality of the image. So a JPEG file has never got all the juicy details in that image. Um, it compresses it into a very simplistic form. So if you somebody gave you a JPEG image and then you stretched it, it'll be awful quality because it's a JPEG image and that's not what, what JPEGs are for. So um, they're great basic file types, small file types, um, and that's a JPEG. PNG, um, a PNG file keeps the quality, the original quality of the photograph. So you tend to find that the file size for a JPEG will be bigger. It's not as big as one of the other ones that I'm gonna go through, but it's bigger than a JPEG. The other difference with a PNG file is it allows transparency. So I will show you why that's useful. So for my business logo, my Build It Brilliant logo, I have both. I have the JPEG image and the PNG image. And a PNG image allows something a little bit different. And you'll be able to see what that is. So this is the JPEG. And this is the PNG. So the PNG images allow for a transparent background. You can't have that with a JPEG. So a JPEG will always have the white box. Uh, but you can have a, a transparent background with a PNG image. That's one of the biggest differences. So let's go back and some, look at some of the others. Um, the other one you've got is a GIF. Um, now, GIFs are really small, tiny, 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 um, and they restrict the colour palette. So you only have, I'm sure it's 256 uh, as an option. Um, sorry, a PNG, just if you're interested, um, a PNG stands for Portable Network Graphic, uh, if you, you ever care. Um, a GIF, a GIF is a graphic interchange format, that's what the GIF stands for, but GIF is a really simple small image with only 256 colours. So if you change some, choose to save something as a GIF, um, don't do that if it's a photograph. Uh, those balloons that we, we just saw, these balloons here, that would be no good as a GIF. It's way too too detailed and way too many colours. Um, you'll see GIFs quite a lot if you go on your phone. It's like, you know, these, these looping quick videos. Um, the reason is, is because GIFs allow the opportunity for animation where you can't get animation as a JPEG or as a PNG. So that's a, one thing that a GIF does that the others don't. Um, the other one, you probably won't see this a lot at all, but it's a TIFF, uh, and a TIFF is Tagged Image File Format, T-I-F-F, -F. sometimes it's T-I-F. Um, these are huge file sizes, so they're a lot bigger, so it kind of goes JPEG, no, GIF is your smallest, JPEG, PNG, uh, and then TIFF. So a TIFF image is what a lot of graphic designers use because it allows um, things like layers. So it would allow you to have different layers within your image, but keep the layers. Uh, it allows for tags. It allows for um, for all sorts of things. That they're huge file sizes, and they're usually be used for the original whatever it is that you want to edit uh, and used for things like if you're going to play with an image in Photoshop or kind of an Illustrator type software, then a TIFF image would have all of that juicy detail in there for you to play with. Um, but you're probably not going to use TIFFs very much in your work line of work. Uh, and the other one is a PDF. Uh, a PDF is a portable document format and PDFs were invented for um, for documents more than images it's not really an image file it's more of a document file um, but a pdf is almost like laminating a piece of paper so you can't edit it um, you can now edit a pdf but you have to have the appropriate software to edit a pdf and most people don't so a, a pdf is almost like taking your document and then laminating it so that then someone else can't ed edit it or amend it um, and that is a pdf so putting all that together um, and answering your question as to why your image is fuzzy, um, I hope that that gives you an idea. 
Uh, the underlining answer is that your image is a raster image and it's a small resolution and then you've stretched it. Um, and what you need to do is either make a higher resolution image in the first place um, or return it to its original size and you'll get the quality. But it depends on what you're working on, it depends on what you need it for, depends on that. And the other thing you could do is go to the original image and save it as a, as a PNG. Uh, not as a JPEG, because if it's in a JPEG format, then that, or or even a GIF format, then that's very, very simple. Uh, you can't take a JPEG image and save it as a PNG and get back the quality. That's not how it works. If you saved it as a JPEG, then that quality is a JPEG. Um, so you can't then go into the JPEG image and save it as a PNG. You'd have to kind of go back to the original image um, in order to save all the quality that's in that original high resolution image. Um, and I hope it's helped you in terms of kind of why you get white backgrounds on things and uh, what you can do about that. Um, and hopefully that's that's helped you a lot with your images. The other thing, oh, before I go, very, very quickly, important, um, please only resize images by the corners, okay? Um, keep the aspect ratio. So say I wanted this balloon picture, but I wanted it more as a rectangle than a, a long image. Um, please don't do this and try and make it a rectangle because it's a raster image uh, and it's never going to keep the aspect ratio what it's supposed to be. And then you get the stretched balloons and then you try and get them back to what they were and it's, it's messed up. It never, ever works. So in order to do that, take the original image and use your crop function. So instead, uh, crop the image to be the rectangle that you want it to be. Um, and then you can kind of stretch that if it's a good image and it keeps that image a really good quality, pure image, but changes its size. Um, so please, if you are resizing these kinds of images, then a, a raster image, then please only use the corners so it keeps the aspect ratio. These ones are a mathematical format, so you can kind of uh, but even that, I mean, it stretches the images, it looks awful. Uh, my advice is don't do it, just just do it by the corners. So I hope that's been useful, I hope you've enjoyed that, and um, I will see you at the next one next week. <laughs>